Hey everyone, welcome back. This video is going to be a sketchbook tour. Uh, as with my last sketchbook tour, which was anime um, art, this one is actually going to be fantasy art. So fairies, dragons, stuff like that. And like I said before, I'm trying to stick with themes for each of my sketchbooks. So this sketchbook is all focused on fantasy creatures and stuff like that. Uh, so let's get right into the sketches. Uh, this is done on Strathmore toned gray. And actually the, I filled this one up. So part of the drawings are on toned tan. So you see a, you get to see a nice uh, difference in the two paper colors. Um, this first sketch is done with big pins, um, which is all the sketches are pretty much done with big pins, colored pencil and markers. Uh, I sketch with this uh, round stick big pin. I use a couple different types of big pins. Um, this crystal as well uh, in different colors, just whatever I feel like using. Mostly I sketch in the pink though. Uh, I just like the way it looks. But uh, these fairy sketches, um, I wanted to, cause I always draw fairies all super thin and skinny. So I wanted to get some variety of fairy sketches in here. And you can see this one's a little bit chubbier. Um, but yeah, just kind of interesting take on fairies. Uh, here's some weird little fantasy creatures. This guy might be like some kind of uh, forest mushroom chieftain. It's kind of what I was thinking here. Uh, this is kind of like a little devil goblin guy. And then this is maybe something a witch created or something that lives in like a bog or something like that. He's got really long uh, fingers that I kind of thought of were like when he's relaxed, they're real loose, but he can make them like hard, like knives. So kind of a scary creature down there. Uh, some more creatures. This is a little devil creature. Um, kind of a, yeah, that, that one was kind of interesting. Uh, pose, he's kind of, uh, I don't know, like he's afraid of something or interesting pose on that one. This one's a uh, troll or a goblin. Um, and then this thing is a weird cat creature. Sometimes with, <clears throat> like on this one, like the face is cartoony and it's because of the eyes, uh, which I probably shouldn't have done because uh, this one doesn't match the other three. So that's one thing stylistically, like this thing is creepy as heck, like, but it, it's got natural features, doesn't look cartoony like this one does. So this one's kind of the odd guy out. I do try and keep, um, when I'm sketching, uh, a similar theme or a uh, similar approach to the characters. Um, so that's a bad face. Should probably have fixed that because I feel like a lot of times I can just take a face like this and just black out the eyes or something and it ends up looking a little bit more natural. Also the body on this one, like the arms. You, uh, When you have like super thin arms like that and then they go real big, that's definitely something that doesn't happen a whole lot in nature. So it looks all cartoony. Um, but out of all of these, this is the one I like the most because it's creepy. Uh, it's just, yeah, you definitely don't want to run up into that in a weird forest. Here's some um, dragon hunter concepts. So these guys might hunt dragons and um, this guy I like, he's kind of cool. I like both of them. I like the strong use of red on this sketch. Uh, I feel like it gives it that pop of color. And for the red, I use these Master's Touch. Really like these markers. They really like um, have just such smooth coverage on the paper. So I use those occasionally and I like the way they look. Uh, that's the last sketch for this sketchbook. It's always fun filling in an entire sketchbook. So that's a bunch of drawings. So we'll go over to this one. So these guys are little mushroom guys. This was just super quick sketches. Uh, nothing I actually really like. A lot of this is a page where I would 
I was trying to get in the mood to draw. So I just start sketching around doing stuff like this, scribble sketching. Um, so, which it worked, felt like drawing that day. Uh, this is a warrior guy. I use uh, this marker right here for the shadows, which I do that a lot. Um, and that's pale lavender. I love it for shadows and stuff, real simple. Uh, then I use the red for some markings and stuff like that. But I like this one. This guy's, I liked his, his body right through here. It has a lot of weight to it. Um, the shadows help with that, but it's also the form that I feel like I got pretty good. Uh, here's some kind of orc warrior sketches. Uh, this just different perspectives. Uh, tried to give him like this look of like just his suit is made of iron that's all riveted together. This one's super creepy. Cause like I showed my wife this one, she's like, oh, she's got such a pretty face, but it's just such a scary, and that's what I was going for. Um, I could have drawn her with the scary face, but sometimes like the right combination of, you know, like ha you know, a beautiful face on this hideous body, like just makes you uneasy about this character, makes it a lot creepier. Um, it's like she's about to eat this little mushroom elf. So that one was kind of cool. I used colored pencil on the face, so I was kind of experimenting with that uh, for a few upcoming sketch covers. Uh, and so I knew I was gonna be using colored pencils a lot, so I got some Prismacolor uh, colored pencils, which I've had these in the past, but I had kind of run out, so I needed to freshen up my supply. These things are so awesome um, as far as blending and getting smooth transitions. Um, I love them, so they just take a lot of time. But uh, this was a pretty successful sketch. I like this one. So this is kind of like a, a high elf or uh, more of a regal elf. And I did this based on a famous <clears throat> uh, painting. I, I took the the pose from it. Um, so I just looked at the pose. I like to do that occasionally uh, from Renaissance art is just kind of look at how they drew the women and figures. They draw obviously thicker women, um, that Venetian style woman. Uh, but this is a beautiful pose. One thing about studying Victorian art or uh, Renaissance art and art from that time period is the poses were just so elegant. Um, so it's a great reference for uh, working on your poses and stuff. A couple of little elves. So this one's kind of a weird elf as far as like, you can see a, a big difference in these two. I, I wanted to go for kind of a frog face, humanoid face on this one. Um, you always have to be careful though. Like this one, the eyes are so big, it makes it look a little cartoony compared to this one. Um, but you can definitely see a big difference in just these two, how this one looks like. It's a much more natural than that one. Uh, but as far as color choice, uh, markers and mixing color pencil. So the things that I'm using right now are great. Uh, like you can mix them really well. So markers, colored pencils, these three things with a little bit of um, a jelly roller pen. Uh, I feel like the combo of this stuff is something I'm really enjoying right now and uh, makes for some interesting looking artwork. So uh, this is a just a warrior, undead warrior, maybe brought back to life by a necromancer or something like that. The only thing I don't like on this one, in fact, maybe we can change it right now, is he looks kind of like a military zombie, like not fantasy art, but like, uh, like a zombie that's um, from like Vietnam or something. I tried to make him made of, and I think it's the metal and how complex the metal is on him, but I didn't like the green because I think the green made him look like a soldier. So it even played that idea up that he's more of a, and as you can see with marker, you can just go right over the top. But anyway, I think the red might help make him look a little bit more like a, an, a knight or something. <laughs> I don't know. But anyway, um, yeah, this is kind of a cool concept. I just wanted him to be kind of held together by 
chunks of metal and stuff like that. So he's a skeleton, but you know, you gotta hold that all together somehow. So the metal is kind of like all pieced him together so he can still move. But um, yeah, you can see how smooth this red marker goes on there. One thing, like nicer markers you'll notice, uh, like as I'm filling this in, you don't get those like edges where you start and stop. Like it blends together so smoothly. Um, and that's what you're gonna get a lot of times with higher end markers. So I still need to finish this guy. There was a lot of detail work on here. And, uh, so this is kind of like a giant, I was th had kind of the idea of the never ending story, the rock biter in there. And that's kind of the theme or idea I had in my head um, for this guy. So, but things I liked about him, I liked his round head. It's kind of interesting. Um, and I like the shadow work. So shadows really give this guy weight, uh, especially on his belly and stuff. But I could spend a little bit of time in it and really finish this one off. But uh, this one's got a little bit more line work than some of the other ones too, which that's one thing I feel like I like a lot about the current medium I'm using. The markers have a nice contrast with the, with the big pins and you can get that line work, adds a little bit of interest to it. Um, but then you still have those nice smooth transitions with the markers. So the transparent, so you can see the line work. That's one hard part about deciding when to use the colored pencils is colored pencils will cover up your line work. So you kind of have to be strategic on where you use that, but you can go over the colored pencil with the big pins so you can get that line work back. So sometimes I find myself doing the big pens and then going over with colored pencil and thinking, gosh dang it, I should have gone over the, with the colored pencil first because now I just have to redo everything I did with the big pens. So, uh, so this is a really random, my wife laughed her butt off when she saw this one. Uh, this is like a unicorn um, creature, warrior, he's got unicorn powers. Uh, so this one's definitely, yeah, an interesting drawing. I love when something like this kind of just pops into my head and it turns out pretty, pretty cool, pretty interesting because it's uh, something you're just not used to seeing. Um, and today's day and age with internet and so many amazing artists out there, uh, it's kind of hard to get people um, or to catch people off guard, I guess. So this guy is pretty interesting looking. Uh, that's it for those. And so the other thing I did, worked on, fantasy art. So this is a sketch cover for the War of the Realms, which is uh, a comic series that Marvel did like a few months ago. Um, and in case you guys haven't seen these before, I've mentioned them in almost every video, so you'd have to be new to my channel not to see these. But I do sketch covers for my local comic store, Geek Geek Nerd Nerd. Uh, they sell these every Saturday. Normally, Chris, who owns the store, does um, one sketch cover a week. So I'll just hand him one of these, and then he auctions them off. Uh, so the last three sketch covers I did, you guys saw, were the... Um, the Vampirella one, and I did those in pencil, so I wanted to do some stuff, like some really vibrant colored ones. Uh, so this is a mixture of colored pencil and uh, marker, all the stuff I was using before. Uh, this is Malekith, who is like a dark elf character, so I decided to do him. Um, but yeah, pretty uh, interesting cover. I had a lot of fun doing all the color work and stuff on this one. Um, but anyway, so tonight at seven o'clock on the live sale on Geeky Nerd Nerd, you can have a chance of either buying this one, which is, like I said, so this one kind of went along with the fam, uh, fantasy theme. This one was a bit se uh, separate. This is Hit Girl. Um, and I really like this cover. I like them both, but I really like how dynamic this one is. Uh, they look like they're connected though, because of the colors I used, but, um, yeah, really vibrant colors on this one. The blood's all dripping down. I love the blood across her face. I like how you're looking up at her like she just knocked you out. Um, and uh, yeah, I feel like this one's, it's so, one thing I realized is 
I'll probably never make it as an artist just because I can't ever stick with one type of drawing or I'm just so all over the place. Like my last drawings are very realistic pencil drawings, the covers I did in the last sketchbook. Um, and these ones are vibrant, colored pencil, marker, stuff like that. So I just like to mix things up. I get bored if I do one thing too much. So, uh, but anyway, um, I don't know which one Chris will sell tonight, but today is Saturday. That's when I'm filming this. So tonight at seven uh, Pacific time, uh, Chris at Geek Geek Nerd Nerd will be doing a live sale, which if you haven't seen those, basically it's um, he films a live video and has a big board of comics or action figures or collectibles behind him and he puts it up and you claim what you want and he'll put different things up and then he'll do auctions like my covers go up as auctions so people bid. So you just say bid 25, bid 30, bid 40. These have been going for around 100 to 150 each. So the bids get pretty high. It's pretty interesting to watch. I would check it out if I were you guys. Uh, but anyway, uh, that's the video, guys. I hope you liked it. Uh, there's lots of interesting sketches in this one. I'm not sure what my next theme will be. So if you guys have any ideas for what I should do on my next sketchbook theme, uh, so... I've done anime sketches. This was fantasy art. Uh, so the next one, I'm not sure. I haven't really thought about it. So give me some ideas in the comments below. Um, and uh, yeah, if you haven't subscribed, I'd love it if you subscribe to my channel. And thanks for watching, guys. I will catch you later.